back to the channel. Today we're going to look at driver spin. You know, what's ideal? How can we change it? What will cause driver spin? So people ask me all the time, you know, what they, they come in for a fitting session and they spin one at 2000 and they go, what, what's ideal? I don't know. So at a rough, when there's charts, you can look at the internet. But let's say at my speed, 100, 105 miles an hour, we're looking for 22, 2300 spin with a 14 degree launch, roughly, within the, around those parameters. Now, if we launch the ball too low, then it's not gonna go real far. If we launch it too high, it's gonna go up and straight down. Now the th same thing will happen with spin. As the ball spins, it gives us control. So that's why you know, a wedge that you spin at 10,000, you can hit pretty straight, whereas a driver at 2,000, it doesn't wanna go very straight sometimes. So backspin gives us control. Now if I spun my driver, for example, at 3,000, I would probably hit 95% of fairways, but it wouldn't go very far. So I may as well hit a three wood at three and a half thousand and, and hit more fairways. That's why we hit more fairways with a three wood, because of the more, the, the more spin that we get. So in order to maximize a driver, we don't want the spin dropping down too low. So I've found, you know, in recent times, and I've, I've touched on this before with my LTD XLS driver, it went miles, right? I had my longest carry distances ever hit my longest shots I've ever hit. But because the spin is too low, when I don't time it, it will want to duck down. It's like wind knocking it down, okay? So if you're hitting downwind with low spin, the wind can really knock it down or it can knock it left or right and it gets a little bit loose. Whereas if you're hitting downwind with lots of spin, the spin keeps the ball in the air and it goes miles. So if you've got a driver that only works downwind, it's probably got too much spin. Uh, and if you've got one that's ducking and weaving left and right, other than user error, it may not have enough spin. So we're going to look at the factors that what cause spin, how we can try and maximise, and, and um, just look at, at how the spin is affected. So the number one reason is speed. So if I swung at 50 miles an hour, if I got my driver out and I just swung at 50 or less and I just hit it, and I just kind of chipped it and it only carried 50 meters, it's not going very far, but we have a look at the, the spin number, it was 670 RPM, so it's not very much spin at all. And then if I went up and just swung faster, I could generate more spin. Now that's pretty low as well, you can see that's falling out of the sky because it's not being hit very hard. Okay, but we're trying to see if that will increase and it's 1300, okay, at, at 87. And then I'm sure if I, you know, swung harder again with the same driver, I could generate more spin. So that's the number one factor is speed. Okay, so the number two factor is, is center of gravity. So we have a, an aerojet here with the weight at the back and then we have an Aerojet LS with the weight at the front. So with a CG or weight more at the front, closer to the face, that is going to produce less spin. That's why you see most of the lower spinning models with some sort of weight more towards the front, the higher spinning models with a weight more towards the back. Now that is a design feature that can help with producing lower spin, that's why it's called an LS, and more spin. Now whether or not this is still low, this is going to be lower based on that center of gravity. So that's the number two factor. So the number three factor is going to be angle of attack. So we're trying to launch a ball in this direction. And if we hit up like this, hit up on the ball, the direction the ball is going and the direction the club's moving are in similar directions, okay? This is a similar direction. This is not gonna produce a lot of spin. So that's why to hit that ball a long way or if you're trying to reduce spin, you need to hit up on the ball, it's going to produce less spin. Okay, once we hit down and the ball's going up, we get that little back spin action because the club's moving in a different direction to where the ball is and it's like hitting a tennis you know, slice shot like this and we start to produce more spin. So the player that hits up 
on the ball. So if I'm, I'm going to try and demonstrate one, see if I can actually hit down. But I'm going to hit up on one, right? Up, which is my normal, right? So that's hit up on. And that's gone a fair way, right? That's the one, you know, carry 250, uh, 1700 spin, right? But that's, what's that, 9.8 up. That's a lot up, right? We launch at 16.2, so it's launching a little bit high, right? Now, I'm gonna try and hit one on the way down. I, 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 I mean, I've gone from 10 up. See if I can hit one on the way down. I'm not very good at this, but I'll try, right? Or I'll try to hit it less up. Let's try down. So I feel like I hit that on, that felt like it was down. Um, we'll see what happens with that. You know, two, three, spin, and angle of attack. There we go, I actually hit one down. So you see the launch then changes to six degrees, the spin, comes up to 23. So I picked up, you know, there was 600 RPM difference or so with an angle of attack. Instead of hitting up, hitting down, you know, those things can really change your spin number. All right, next factor, number four factor, loft. Loft on the club, we've got a 10 and a half against a nine. The 10.5, all other things being equal, same speed, same contacts. They are going to be more spin with more loft, less spin with less loft. So, I'm not talking about, I'm just talking purely this face angle, the loft angle. I'm not talking about an open and closed face at all. I'm just talking about this angle. So if you're looking to increase spin, maybe think about going to a 10 and a half. If you're looking to decrease spin, go to a nine. That's what happens with a change in loft. We get less, spin with less loft and more spin with more loft. All right, so moving into 4A, I suppose, getting back onto the loft, but it's the presented loft. So shafts will advertise as higher spin or lower spin, and some will say that, say that the shaft doesn't create spin, but it does. Because what happens is with a, this is a pretty more active tip shaft. So for, sometimes for a smooth swing, I'll try and get a visual here. Swinging nice and smooth, plenty of lag here. What happens with this active tip is it's going to do this through impact. Like that shaft is deflecting and we're losing loft, okay? Losing loft. Now, if I'm really aggressive with the active tip shaft, what might actually happen is it's already flexed through impact, before impact, and it's gonna create more loft. Okay, so that flexing, that flexing back is actually creating more loft or sometimes this is deflecting this way and taking the loft off. So the shaft can affect our dynamic loft, we call that. So is this a high launch shaft? In theory, yes. But for me, it actually reduces dynamic loft. Now the stiffer tip won't deflect as much forward or backward through impact. So the stiffer tip will give a more natural loft. The more active tip or the softer tip, it could deflect back, but it could also deflect forward, particularly for aggressive swingers. And that might turn my nine degree into 10 or 11 degrees and then create more spin. So does the shaft create spin? Yes, it does. How does it create spin? By how much it's flexing through impact to increase or decrease the loft. So don't just assume high launch shaft goes high. It's incorrect. It's what does that shaft do to your dynamic loft through impact? For me, it actually reduces it and that's why I play high launch shafts with a, with a very, you know, I hit up a lot. So high launch shaft, hitting up, smooth transition. It's gonna reduce loft and then reduce spin instead of increasing. So point six is face. Is the face when we hit it open and pointing to the right for the right-handed golfer? Or is it closed and pointing to the left? Now generally, generally, when the face closes, then that loft is, is down, which is gonna produce less spin. 
when the face opens. And we're talking all other things the same. When the face opens, it produces more loft. The face is now pointing up and open and we get more loft, there's more spin. So it gets back to loft, but it's a similar thing. So if I hit one here with a really open face, I'll just hit two shots. And I'll try and keep them relatively the same, but open face. Okay, that's open. You can see how that's carving out to the right. You know, it's probably gonna launch relatively high and produce quite a lot of spin. Three, nine, four, four with a face uh, 8.6 open. Okay, so 3944. So, so let's say 4008 degrees open. Now, if I just have a similar sort of swing, close the face, I'm going to try and have it closed here. We will see um, a different story, a totally different shot, but 1698 spin and with a face that was 3.6 closed, right? Similar um, other characteristics, I suppose. So, so if you're a player that plays with an open face or a closed face, those two things are really going to affect your spin. Okay, and the last one that I'm gonna talk about today with affecting spin or what changes our spin is contact on the face. So these clubs, drivers, they have a a roll and bulge, so they're, they're curved this way and they're curved this way as well. So depending on where we hit them in the face can really change our spin number. So for me, I, you know, I miss off the bottom of the face um, and so that will cause the ball to spin more if we hit off the bottom. So if I hit a driver here and I try and hit one you know, pretty hard. So that was hit um, quite close to the top, you know, it felt like it to me, although it's probably close to the center. Let's have a look at where the contact point was. <laughs> there you go, five mil toe, zero mil low. So to me, that feels like it's high on the face, but that only produced 1,638 RPM. Okay, at 103 miles an hour. Now, if I hit another one, I'll hit another one and I'll try and hit it a little, a little low. Okay, that felt lower on the face. So we're looking, you know, 103 miles an hour. I don't know what that last one was. 103, same. Okay, and then we get, um, it was in the center, but 20 mil low on the face and 2277. So basically what happened on this one was that we got about 1700 spin when I hit it in the center. And then that spiked up uh, 500 or so RPM when I hit it out the bottom. So even where you're making contact can, it, can change the spin. So if you've got a golf shaft that is constantly making you hit out of the bottom of the club, it's probably gonna give you a false spin number uh, because you're constantly hitting out of the bottom. If you've got another shaft that you're hitting right at the top, you know, it's gonna produce very low spin. So again, in that fitting scenario, when we've, we're, we're always looking at contact, we're looking at dynamic loft, we're looking at all these little different things to try and get you in that window. And it's a wonderful thing, you know, trying to, trying to help people out in those nice windows of, of spin and launch and carry and trying to maximize where the driver goes. But certainly there's a whole bunch of factors. I'm sorry, there's so many. Um, and there's, you know, there's more and more and more that you could look at in what is going to change your spin. So uh, that's a great little insight for you. If you've got any further questions, please let me know. I'll get back to anyone that, uh, that asked me anything there.